Okay, chapter 10, sound beams, uh, discusses the following, anatomy of a sound beam, determining focal depth, sound beam divergence, spherical waves, lateral resolution, and focusing. This is an easy chapter. It's full of wonderful pictures. Please pay attention to them. Read along in the book. Do, or do, you, do whatever you have to do. Use your notes to follow in this chapter and you'll do well on the test. Um, remember when we're initially discussing these things, we're talking about a single disc shaped unfocused PZT crystal. In other words, we just take a chunk of crystal and that's what we're talking about. And that's what the registry is going to talk about. And I'm going to ask you about, you know, millions of little crystals all tied together, each having their electrical current, blah, 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 blah. They just want to know that you know the general rules of ultrasound physics. And that's what they're talking about. So remember that when you think about these things. A single disc shaped piece of PZT crystal in the continuous wave mode. Remember, it's not pulsed until we make it pulsed. <clears throat> the shape of a sound beam, this was all very easy to you guys. Um, we understand that it is an hourglass shape. When it starts, it's the width of the transducer. It narrows till it gets to the smallest diameter and then immediately begins to diverge i.e. the hourglass shape. There are five terms that describe either points or areas along the sound beam. And again, these are very easy. And if you refer to figure 10-2, page 134, you'll be all right. So first one is the focus, then the near zone, focal length, far zone, focal zone. Now, when I think of focus, I think of a specific point or place. There are three zones. Those are areas. And a length or focal length is a distance from one point to the next. Even though it may be measuring a specific zone, the length is still a specific distance. So let's talk about the focus or the focal point. That is the location where the beam diameter is the narrowest. The width of the sound beam is one half the width of the beam as it leaves the transducer. So there are several ways that either myself or the registry can ask this. Uh, what's the narrowest part of the beam, the focus? Uh, at what location is the beam diameter one half the width as it started? The focus. Just, just think of it that way. The near zone or near field or Fresnel zone is the region from the transducer to the focus. The start of the transducer or the beam all the way till the end of the narrowing or the focus. The beam gradually narrows to the near through the near field. Uh, the, this is very important. The focus is located at the end of the near zone. They're just giving you points. It's like the city limits we talked about. From the transducer to the focus. If I say what's the start of the near zone, you say the transducer. If I say what's the end of the near zone, you say the focus. It's just a play on words. Uh, it starts the same diameter as the crystal, then narrows to one half the width of the crystal at the focus. You already learned that with the focus. Just, just it is what it is. It's just learning the parts. The focal length. Now remember, this is a distance. It's also called the focal depth or near zone length. I apologize for that little space there. Focal length is the focal depth or near zone length. It is the distance from the transducer to the focus. So keep in mind when myself or the registry ask a question, what is the distance? You need to immediately start thinking length. Okay? Not if I say what is the area, think zone. So it's the distance from the transducer to the focus. The far zone is the far field or Fraunhofer zone. 
that is the region starting at the focus and extending deeper. Within the far zone, the beam diverges or spreads out. At the beginning of the far zone, which is the focus, the beam is one half the width of the crystal. So there's a million different ways I can ask these questions. What's the start of the far field? The focus. What's the width of the beam at the start of the far field? Well, you know what the start of the far field is. It's the focus. So you know that the focus is one half the width of the crystal from when it started. Very simple. Okay. Just read your questions and, and figure out what I'm asking. And if you know all of these zones and areas and lengths and points, you'll get it. When the beam is two near zone lengths from the transducer, the beam is again the same size as the crystal. Now remember, I said we live in a bilateral world. So, you know, everything until we decide to start manipulating as sonographers, if I just pick that crystal up, there's a point to the focus, and then there's a point to the far field, or there's a point to the focus where it narrows and then it immediately starts to diverge in the far field and that's going to be even throughout so if I say what that means is if the crystal diameter is 10 centimeters at the focus it's going to be 5 centimeters from the from the transducer to the focus is 20 centimeters so at two near zone lengths I understand that the the trans the be the width of the beam is going to be the same as when it started so if I tell you that that near zone length is 20 centimeters well what is two near zone lengths 40 centimeters so if I say what's the width of the beam at 40 centimeters you need to know that it was that whatever it was when it started the same size as when it started and there'll be examples with little numbers again as long as you understand your principles you'll get it okay it, this isn't rocket science don't make it any more complicated than it is anything past those two near zone lengths remember in the far field the beam diverges so anything past that the, the beam diameter is wider than the active element it just goes on and on and on. The focal zone. <clears throat> that is the region around the focus where the beam is relatively narrow. Now this is the area from the focus and everything around it, very close to it. Okay, So if I know the focus is right in the middle or splits that beam basically, then half of it lives in the far field and the other half lives in the near field, right? So anything arising from this area, you have more accurate images, all your resolutions better. Um, and again, half the focal zone is in the near field. The other half of the focal zone is in the far field. So if I say the focal zone measures four centimeters, two of those centimeters are in the near field, the other two centimeters are in the far field. So if you look at page 136, there's a brief summary of all, the, all those descriptive terms we talked about. Read it, understand it, and you will be just fine.